Good evening, Fright Fiends. I am Erlik the Gorlord, brother of Ikari, spawn of Jayesh. A god to some, and a devil to others, but a film buff to all. And I come to you on this sacred night from the depths of the underworld to begin a new order, to bring forth a new tribe, and to offer you a look at the best and the worst that the world of horror has to offer. From a charmingly devilish perspective, of course. So I tell you now, minions, you are henceforth entrusted to obliterate that like button. Understanding, of course, that you are also expected to subscribe to this wonderful new channel and serve as part of my infernal order forever. Oh. And before we get started, it is important to note that around here sometimes you will find safe, fresh cuts on display. And other times, well, other times there are spoilers. And now that you've been warned, join me as I cut into Joel M. Reed's cult classic masterpiece, Blood Sucking Freaks. Sucking Freaks is a 1975 no budget exploitation extravaganza written and directed by Knight of the Zombies creator Joel M. Reed and distributed by those gnarly schlockmeisters over at Troma Entertainment. The film stars Seamus O'Brien, Luis de Jesus, and a handful of other people that you have never heard of. It is worth mentioning O'Brien and De Jesus because they are, after all, the two principal characters, and frankly, because they both have great fucking names. O'Brien stars as Sardou, the master of the macabre, and De Jesus, who had starred only a few years earlier in an adult film entitled The Anal Dwarf, as his afro and overall sporting little person sidekick, Ralphus. This B-movie version of Mr. Rourke and Tattoo run the theater of the macabre in what is presumably New York City, where they keep a secret collection of exotic animals on hand. In fact, these two distinguished gentlemen are connoisseurs of sorts, for they are both purveyors of finely aged, top-of-the-line grade A established here by the longest reveal in the history of cinema. You see, Sardou's grisly torture shows are no garden variety off-Broadway performance, but rather his sickest and most depraved fantasies, carried out in real time in front of a live studio audience. An audience consisting of ten people, but that's besides the point. We quickly discover that Master Sardou and his demented, fuzzy-headed friend do not need a real audience to have way too much fun implementing a little torture on one of their pretty pets. 
During the act, we are also introduced to most of the remaining cast when we meet football star Tom Maverick and his girlfriend, the prima ballerina Natasha Dimitelli, played by Niles McMaster in Legion Crown. This is also where we meet the eminent critic, a man with a name that missed its calling in gay pornography, Creasy Silo, played by Alan DeLay. Both Maverick and Silo have their doubts about what they have seen at the theater, but while Maverick is ultimately lulled into thinking that he has seen a performance of sorts, Silo goes so far as to call Sardu's show trash. Despite his scathing criticisms, Sardu gets it in his mind that Silo is just the man to review his show. Why on earth would you ask a man who just called your show trash to review it? I mean, do you think he's going to change his fucking mind? Perhaps you can grease his palm. Perhaps you can crease his fucking silo. But he makes me so goddamn mad. I could just fucking... does lead to this funny little exchange. But you are going to review my show? Absolutely not. You heard me in there. If I were to review your so-called show, even badly, I fear some of my readers might come just out of curiosity. And I do not want to be responsible for keeping your theater open one more day. Then we shall see. Really? We are then treated to an overenthused Ralphus having way too much fun bringing scraps of meat to the captives. Yet sadly, nothing seems to bring Sardu any relief, not even his. not even his custom dinner table. After all, his show must be reviewed. Even if he knows going in that the reviewer is going to shit all over it. You want us to kidnap him, Master? Yes, Ralphus. I can't do it. It's too dangerous. I'll get caught. You must do this for me, Ralphus. Then what will you do for me, Master? Ah, yes. Bring him Silo. But not before rewarding your favorite little anal dwarf there, Master Sardu. <sighs> After what was likely some kink in the stink, Silo is kidnapped and shown just how demented his new captors are. Only Sardu wants more. And he decides to form a ballet starring the reluctant Natasha Dinatelli. From here we see Dinatelli kidnapped at what is supposed to be the New York State Theater, but what actually looks more like a locker room in an abandoned rec center in the South Bronx. She is then shown the world of torture that awaits her if she does not accept Sardu as her lord and master. Maverick, meanwhile, gets word that something is amiss. And soon after, he is stopped by a donut gulping grease ball in a cup named Sergeant Tucci. Played by Dan Fauci. No, not that Fauci. Who, after a nice bribe, decides to help uncover the mystery of Natasha's disappearance. So the crooked cop and the tater hang jock have to find the prima ballerina in time before Sardu makes her not only his featured ballerina, but his next concubine. This film has blood, tits, torture, cannibalism, beheadings, a clever take on throwing darts, brain slurping, bondage, 1970s bush, and the happiest little sadist dwarf ever. Oh, and don't forget, 
dance moves that came right out of the Crispin Glover Academy of Dance. Now, was there nearly enough money to bring this lovely little vision to fruition the way they could have? Not a chance. Does the lighting look like cheap shop lamps bought at one of your home depots? Yes. Does the story even make any sense? No. But this film is a lot of fun, at least if you're not squeamish. O'Brien and Jesus alone make the film worth a laugh, and where it does fall flat in other respects, it achieves its goal of being entertaining. Of course, if you are entertained by things that can be construed as sick and twisted. Despite its flaws and lack of budget, I have to give this little disturbing cult classic three out of five Ralph's heads. This has been a devilish look at Joel M. Reed's blood-sucking freaks. I am Ehrlich the Gore Lord. And until next time, I'll be seeing you all sooner or later.